Hey friends, welcome to Campfire Point here at Minioe. Uh, welcome to our Sunday service. Now if this was a normal camp uh, summer, then we would be doing one of these services every single week. And we're here to recreate that moment, recreate the, the joy of being together as a family under God. And uh, we love that you've joined us this morning and we're going to sing a few songs. And we're going to hear a message from Rich later on. So join us in worship as we lift high the name of Jesus this morning. You guys ready? Awesome. One, two, three, four. Here we go. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands hath made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul.
never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, no. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be together here. We thank you that you are good, and we thank you that you are the, the one who makes a way for us to a, a life full of joy and full of peace. And God, we pray that this summer you would get glory, and we thank you that uh, though we can't be together for this summer, Lord, we are near to each other because of your son, Jesus. We thank you for the bond that we have uh, and the brotherhood and the sisterhood of believers. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey friends, my name is Rich Birch. I uh, have the privilege, the honor of being the executive director here at Camp Minioe. And I wanna welcome you uh, to a chapel service at Campfire Point. You know, for 74 summers, uh, our staff and campers have been coming to this spot to really enjoy God's creation on the shores of Mary Lake in the heart of Muskoka for uh, chapel services or for campfires during the week. And so, you know, this looks a little different than a normal Sunday morning. You know, typically we gather our staff together on a Sunday morning to encourage them and to prepare them for another week of serving and loving young kids that come uh, to camp. And so today I want to take uh, really a message for our summer staff. This would be for the young people who would have been serving or should have been serving this summer at camp. Uh, and so like a normal Sunday morning, maybe you're a camper and you're watching in because you're participating in home adventures. We're, we're glad you're with us and thank you so much for competing with your teams this summer or or maybe you're a, a, a parent who's also watching in and like a Sunday morning uh, we're just honored that you're with us and you're on we're honored that you allow us to serve your kids or, or maybe you're a friend of camp oh my prop dropped up oh, that's fine don't worry about that uh, maybe you're a friend of camp who's just popped over because uh, you want to enjoy one of those great hamburgers or hot dogs we call them the Al Holt signature hamburger and hot dog uh, after our service this morning and so we're just honored that you're here with us today. Uh, if you've got a Bible, I would love for you to turn in Mark chapter 2. Uh, this is a passage that has jumped out to me in the last few weeks. My wife and I are reading through the New Testament this summer. We're going, uh, you know, chapter by chapter all the way through. And so we were in Mark 2 recently, and there was something that happens in this passage that reminds me of the amazing young people uh, that come and serve here every Sunday summer. You know, our mission at Camp Minioe is to develop uh, tomorrow's leaders through life-changing adventure in God's creation. And a big part of the way we do that is through developing young leaders that come and serve on our staff every summer. And so there's a part of this passage when I was reading it that jumped out and, and, and it said, you know, that's the heart, that's the spirit of our staff. And so today I want to kind of pull that apart and look at it. So if you've got your Bible, Mark chapter 2, we're starting right at the beginning. And let me read a few passages and then uh, we'll We'll dive in. Mark 2, 1 and 2. Uh, when Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. 
Soon, the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no room, even outside the door. Well, so first of all, let's just stop there. Uh, I got to be honest, when I read this in this socially distant era, uh, that jumped out to me actually all through Mark 2. There's just crowds, crowds, crowds. And, uh, you know, we live in a time where, hey, we don't really see crowds anymore. But, but actually, there were so many people here uh, in Capernaum. Jesus kept coming home here. He did a lot of uh, miracles in this town. He kept coming back. If you read the New Testament, you see he multiple times kept coming back to this location. And so he was kind of known entity. He was known in this community. And so many people came and heard, they'd heard the news, wow, Jesus is here, Jesus is here, that they packed the home that he was staying, so much so that there wasn't even room outside of it. Uh, You know, a couple years ago, my son Hunter, uh, he plays in a band, and uh, the very first uh, uh, show that he ever played was in a little tiny coffee shop in our town called Mark Four Brothers. It's a tiny coffee shop. And by tiny, I mean you can probably count the number of seats on maybe two hands. It's a small location. And I remember that day uh, because, you know, we all packed in there. There was, you know, the four kids in the band and then there was all the parents. So now you're, you're up to like 12 or 14 people. And... Um, Oh, my notes flew away like they do at Camp Firepoint. And, you know, there was like maybe 18 people, 19 people, and it was packed that day. But, you know, this day when Jesus showed up, there were so many people that they couldn't fit in the home. And in fact, they were gathered around the outside. Well, let's, let's read and see what happens next. Mark 2, and, uh, Mark 2, verse 2 and onward. Uh, when he was preaching God's word to them, he was teaching Four men arrived carrying a friend, a paralyzed man, on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above uh, uh, his head, that his being Jesus, and they lowered the man on a mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, listen to this, seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, he said, my child your sins are forgiven. So let's just set the scene here. Jesus is preaching. He's teaching. People are leaning in. Uh, They want to hear more about what he has to say. There's so many people there. They're packed. And these friends show up. They they want to bring uh, this, this paralyzed man, a friend of theirs, to come see Jesus. Now, this was very much what happened in Capernaum. People would always bring him people to heal. And so, but there were so many people that they couldn't get through the crowd. They, they couldn't pack in. They couldn't push all the way forward. So what they did was they hauled their friend up to the roof. They broke the roof open and literally lowered their friend down right at the foot of Jesus. Now, Jesus says something astonishing here. In fact, he says something heretical. He says something that, that would, would be seen by, and actually we see later in the passage, it was considered theologically wrong. It was, it was a, a bad thing for him to say. Jesus says, My child, your sins are forgiven. That's astonishing. Why is that? Because he saw the friend's faith. He's saying, hey, uh, because of the faith of your friends, because of what your friends did, I want to see you with me in heaven. I want to see your sins be forgiven. Now, this, uh, because of the faith of their friends, this uh, man uh, received faith. He ultimately received eternal life. Now, this is heretical. This was a a crazy idea. It was a crazy idea then. It's a crazy idea now. Now, in fact, actually later in the passage, which we're not going to get to, uh, the religious leaders overheard this and they freak out and they say, why, how is it that he's saying that he can forgive sins? How is it that he's saying that he could forgive sins even in this scenario? And then Jesus says something amazing. He says, well, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or uh, to get up and walk. But because he's Jesus, he tells the man to get up and walk and he walks. Now, the part of this story that sticks out to me, the part that reminds me of uh, the amazing young leaders that we have at camp is the four friends. The four friends that are so passionate for their friend, their their paralyzed friend. They're so passionate that that person would come to know Jesus, that they not only push through the crowd, they ultimately climb up on top of the roof, they tear open the ceiling, and they lower their friend to the ground. 
I see our summer staff like those four friends, carrying the man on the mat, bringing their friend to Jesus, making the, a way for Jesus, ultimately helping their friend come to know Christ. Now, it looks a little different at camp. It looks a little different when kids come here. You know, we're hoping next summer, by God's grace, we'll see 2,500, 2,600, 2,700 kids come to camp. It looks a little different. It's a large crowd. It looks different than in Jesus' day. Instead of uh, bringing kids on a mat, it might be bringing kids on a wakeboard. You know, see, our, our staff will use our boats and our wakeboards to build a relationship with kids that ultimately uh, they will uh, use that relationship to communicate with the kid about the amazing uh, things that Jesus has done in their life. And, and we see tr amazing transitions happen in our campers' lives. So it may not be a mat, it might be a wakeboard or a wake boat. You know, it may not be a mat, it might be a canoe. It might be a canoe trip. Maybe, maybe it's traveling to Tamagami in our Northwoods program and paddling uh, out at the end of a long day and getting a chance to talk about the amazing things that Jesus has done in our staff's life. You see, it's that transition, it's, it's that transaction, it's that relationship, that bridge of what we do at camp that mirrors what these four friends were doing here. You see, those four friends, they used what they had to communicate the message of Jesus, to get their friends to Jesus. Here at camp, we use different things. You know, this summer, we've been using technology. You know, maybe you've had a chance to try our 360. You might say, why are we doing that? We're doing that because we want to show kids God's creation here at camp, and we want to build a bridge. We want them to be excited about, to log on to Home Adventures, to be a part of that. Not because we're excited about technology, not because we're excited about 3D glasses, but we're excited because uh, we use this kind of technology ultimately to communicate with kids, to see them have a close encounter with Christ, to build a relational bridge that ultimately will become the mat, will become the tool that we'll use to see kids take steps closer to Jesus. You see, friends, fun is a part of our strategy here at Minneoing. These friends, they used a mat. That was their strategy. For us, we use fun. We use the activities that we have around us to build a bridge to ultimately point people to Jesus. So my question for you today, young leaders who may be listening in, do you have friends that you're hoping will take steps closer to Jesus? Maybe this is a friend you're working with this summer. Maybe you're working out of Tim Hortons or you're serving in uh, you know, a, a daycare in your town or, or maybe you're working in you know, some sort of front line even with COVID. Do you have a friend there that you want to come to see Christ? You know, the strategy is still the same when you're at home than when you're here at camp. What bridge could you use to bring them a little bit closer to Jesus? Maybe uh, you love a church that you're connected with. Maybe this would be a season for you to invite that friend to come with you, whether it's online or in person to that church. That can be a mat. That can be a relational bridge that Jesus could use to ultimately see your friend take steps closer to him. Maybe it's serving together. Maybe there's a cause that you know uh, is close to God's heart. You could ask that friend of yours to join with you and serve together. You see, that could be the mat. That could be the bridge that God wants to use. You know, this summer, you have an opportunity uh, to bring your friends, to bring your community closer to Jesus. And my encouragement for you, summer staff of the summer of 2020, is to look around in your circle, to get creative. We give you the tools when you're here at camp. Uh, we give you the, the bridge, the relational mats to reach out to others. But this summer, I want to encourage you uh, to, to lean in, to find ways to be creative, to bring your friends to Christ. Of course, I'd be remiss without saying that probably the, one of the best ways that you could help others come to know Christ is to come back next summer. We would love to see you on our team next summer. Summer 2020 is going to be, 2021 is going to be our 75th summer and we are more excited than ever to host thousands of kids here at Minioi that we can bring to the foot of Jesus so that they can encounter him. They can encounter his teaching and his life transformation uh, in their lives. And we'd love to have you come back and be a part of the team. Listen, you and I, 
we have a chance to be the four friends in this story. You and I, we have relationships, we have people in our lives that it's our job to bring them closer to Christ, to do what we can do. These guys, they tore open the roof, lowered their friend on a mat. You and I, we might use the, uh, the things we have around us, the relationships and the activities we have around us to bring our friends closer to Jesus. I'd love to pray for us, and then I've got a couple announcements. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you uh, for our summer staff. Lord, I thank you for uh, these hundreds of young people who every summer come here and uh, out of what you've done in their lives, serve others. Lord, there are so many ways that I see our staff being like these four friends uh, who go out of their way, who climb up onto the roof and tear open the roof to lower their friend before Jesus. Lord, uh, I am so thankful for uh, the leaders who have done that for 74 summers and continue to do that uh, even this summer uh, as we serve online, as we serve in our family adventures. I am so thankful for those people. Lord, give us wisdom to see how to do that in our relationships, even if we're not plugged into camp right now, even if we're not uh, up in Muskoka. Lord, give us uh, insight and creativity to see what kind of bridge what kind of mat uh, you could use uh, to see people come closer to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks so much, friends. We are so honored that you have been with us this morning. We hope that you uh, have enjoyed this experience. We'd love to invite you to come be a part of camp. We still have some spaces available at our Family Adventures, which is a day-long experience here in August. We'd love for you to come and be a part of that. Now, normally at this point, I would say, hey, leaders, make sure you get to your team meetings by 11 o'clock. Uh, make sure that uh, you get a great lunch at Al Holt, world-famous barbecue. That starts at 12 noon. Hope things are great, friends. We'll talk to you later. Take care.